Hey everybody, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles, and I'm back with another One Page Wonder. So this one again is Christmas themed, but you can make yours with any paper you like. So I've got a belly band, a big tuck spot there. You open it up like this. Look at that. Aren't these beautiful papers? I'm going to tell you about them in just a second because I have a fun uh, coupon code for you if you're interested in shopping um, for some new paper. So that's fun, right? Let's see. I love this tag. So these papers are by Cherith Arts and the kit with the backgrounds is called, what is it called? Christmas Digital Seamless, and it's inspired by William Morris, and I love William Morris and um, Edith Holden, all those things, like with the uh, birds and the botanicals and all of that, so I think it's just beautiful. And um, so I also, by the same the same shop by Cherith Arts, I used her Christmas uh, stamp and postage and ephemera, and then her cardinal Christmas gift tags which are these and I think I have a page printed I haven't cut out yet so the same tags that I used but with the two from are available in the same kit so super easy gift tags for Christmas right put a cute little piece of ribbon or just punch a hole and tie it onto your package so same birds same tags without the two from is also available and then there's also the backing um, if you want to like have a fun neutral on the back of the card, you can do that. So anyway, super fun. Cherith is so, so generous. She has a coupon code just for um, you guys, for the viewers of my channel. So it's Silver Sparkles 65. I'll have all the information in the description. You get 65% off if you buy three or more kids, right? So you have to make pick three things, but you're going to get 65% off if you do that. If you only want one, she's got great, great prices. And a lot of times there's sale, other sales too. So anyway, go check her out on Etsy. It'll be linked in the description and you can see the kits too that, that I used. And I just think it's so beautiful. All right. So let me show you how we're going to put this together. As always, I'm going to have all the measurements, the scoring, the layering papers, everything that will be in the description. So you don't have to worry about uh, taking notes or whatever. They will be in the description and you can craft with me. Always double check what I've said by those Sometimes I misspeak in the middle of crafting. So, so check that out before you cut your paper. Okay, start with one piece of 12 by 12 paper. And again, I picked red because I'm doing Christmas. And I just thought it really offset those papers so pretty. Okay, so I cut it in half. So now I have two pieces that measure 12 by 6. On the first piece, on the 12 inch side, just double checking my notes, we're going to score at one and a half five and a half inches and nine and a half inches. So this is gonna make a pretty standard size mini album. It'll end up being four by six when we're done. So second piece of 12 by six, we're gonna just score it at four and at eight. All right, pretty easy scoring. That's all of our scoring for today. Now in the prototype, I did round the corners. This one I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it square so you can see what both look like. I like both. And um, But if you want yours rounded, I'll show you here in a second. I rounded all but like two, two all but two, two of the panels and I'll show you which ones just in case you want to do yours. I'm going to carefully make sure everything's folding nicely on the score lines. Now this is the piece, this little piece here is gonna be this front pocket. And I did not round these two pieces. This flap here that we're gonna fold over is making that last page, the, the side pocket. And I didn't round these two. So those are the only four corners I didn't round. So if you're gonna wanna round yours, now's the time to do it. Get your paper folded and you'll round these four corners. And then you're gonna round all four of these. And that's 
you can see I did it all the way through. It was just those two side load pockets that I did not round the corners on. Hope that makes sense. Okay, now, depending on how you attach this piece in, you can end up with diff different types of page configurations. I'm not gonna go through multiple options in this video, but I am going to, I just wanna make sure I'm doing this right. I am going to, um, make mine just like I did here. Just know if you kind of get this piece turned differently, you might end up with a little different folio. It wouldn't be a bad thing. It just wouldn't be exactly like mine. Okay, so to get started, the piece that has, this is the one and a half inch flap and a two and a half inch flap, put your one and a half inch flap to the left and then take your piece that's like a tri-fold. Don't have to have it folded up at this point. And we're just going to attach this pocket to make the cover. So this is gonna be our cover panel. Now my cardstock, that's the word I'm looking for, is quite thick. So like I said, I just made sure everything was folding nicely using my bone folder, but you know, just wanna line it up as carefully as you can. I'm gonna add glue the bottom along this seam and the top. And I am just using my Lineco PVA glue that's a wet white glue. And um, I just put it in the little bottles. If you're new to my channel, this is my everyday favorite glue, Lineco brand PVA. And if you wanna see some of the supplies I use when I'm crafting, check out my Amazon storefront. The link's in the description of all my videos. And, um, if you make a purchase, Amazon does pay me a few pennies. It's an affiliate link, but it's no cost to you. So just full disclosure, but those are things that I actually buy and use in that, in that storefront. Okay, so now we have this piece. And I want to make the top load pocket. So... This is gonna get folded up this. Now you're gonna notice, and especially if you're using really thick paper like mine, I have to continually kind of come through here <laughs> with my bone folder and make this happy. Make it happy living together. So it, it won't buckle if you're if you just kind of just keep creasing as you go and the paper will get used to being together. Okay. This is going to be our top load pocket, and I do want a notch here, but I also want to go ahead and layer the paper so that when I notch it, it's just a little bit easier for me. So let me go ahead and get out. I've already pre-cut these, the papers that we're gonna need. These four little pieces are for the pages that have the little side load pockets, but all the other pages, you need the same size layering paper. It'll be in the description, but it is three and seven eighths by five and seven eighths, okay? And it just leaves you a little tiny trim um, of whatever cardstock, you know, you're using around the layering paper. So these are just some of the prints from the kit that I have cut uh, in, into the right size pieces. You can use the same, you print the same one and use it throughout. You can mix and match kind of like I have. This kit, by the way, she gives you the actual papers that print eight and a half by 11, but she also gives you the tiles, square tiles, that you can then, if you're comfortable using like Canva or Photoshop or one of those programs, you can make the papers and all kinds of, um, they, they fit together like a little puzzle piece. So I'm not gonna go into all of that, but just know when you buy the kit, you get both. So you have papers that are already ready to go and then you can also use them to make other papers. I have not thought through all my patterns. I've already cut out the papers for my pockets too. I don't know which papers are gonna look the best where, but I'm just gonna pick one. I'm just gonna pick one and go ahead. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and glue it right here. Just making sure I'm not getting myself confused. Just remind you where you're at too. This is your front cover. This is going to be our top load pocket. And I want the notch on this side. So if I do this, yeah, I think we're good. I'm gonna go ahead and glue this on this panel. So not where the pocket is, but the very next one. Maybe it'll be easier for you to see if I do like that. We're gonna glue it right in the middle right here. And again, you really can't mess this up. If you end up with your pages in a little bit different configuration, that's okay. All right, I'm gonna stick it down right here so I get that little bit of red throughout. And then I'm just gonna use one of my circle punches. This one's a one and a half inch. And I'm gonna make that little thumb notch. Little bird lost his head. Oops. <laughs> It'll be okay. I didn't think through that when I picked that, but it's okay. Now, to make the pocket, the top load pocket, we're going to just glue this piece to here. So, we're going to have glue along this side, the bottom, and right along the crease. Probably don't need it along the crease. Whoa. Oh, well. That's just going to take up a little bit of the real estate in my pocket. I could wipe it off. <laughs> oh, goodness. There. Glue's gone crazy. There we go. And then just give that a moment to grab. How cute. Now, let's go ahead and glue this pocket down. It's going to be the side load. So, again, glue along the bottom and along the top. Very easy. Okay. And basically now, it's just the fun layering. Again, you're gonna have to close it up, push it all back down, <laughs> and make it happy living together. There we go. So easy. So let's do our layering. The Let's go ahead and lay down the pieces that are all the same size. And I kind of want to look at this because when it's opened all the way, you see these together and pick my patterns for these pages. I already have these cut as well. Now, the measurements are a little different in that they're still five and seven eighths, but this piece that's going to nestle right in there that piece is one and a quarter inches. This piece right here is two and three eighths inches. I can turn them different ways and decide how I like it. Kind of like the little bitty berries down there. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put these pieces on because I've got them cut. So these patterns are what they're going to be. Yeah. Okay. And again, if you don't want to do all of this layering, you can do the same style, One Page Wonder, like I said, with a piece of scrapbook paper that's double-sided. And then just add you know, the, the additional pockets and things with other coordinating papers. So you don't have to be limited by what I'm doing, but I really like for Christmas having this red cardstock as the backdrop with these papers and I'm going to have several of my one page wonders this style and others at my craft fair which is a week from today and I have a lot of little you know mini albums folios that I'll have um, at the craft fair so I'm excited and so I wanted more Christmas items because I think people are going to be in the mood to shop for Christmas. All right, there's a little bit of blue in this paper. So I'm thinking about bringing the blue panel into this page. Some of the birds got blue. These two are kind of the same pattern. I think they're cut from the same 
the same page. Hmm. We'll break them up. How about like that? I don't know. Let's put the blue back in the middle. All right, I'm just gonna lay them down. And then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna install the pockets after we get all of these layered down. So when I made the original one, I didn't cut pockets or belly bands or anything like that until I had done all my layering of my paper. And one of the benefits of that is then I could pick patterns that I thought complemented well <clears throat> or even portions of the pattern. You know, if I wanted another bird to be on the pocket or a floral. I did not do this for the video. I just cut the paper. I like all of the, the patterns and they all coordinate well together. So that wasn't a problem. It's just we'll have to see how they how they come together. How they come together. And again, we can go back to the prototype and I can show you, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know why my voice is doing that. Like I specifically thought this belly band would look good against that backdrop. And those are very similar. I think they're from the same page. And then I, the pockets are from this, a different, but the same. So this pocket is from this pattern. So I kind of went through and strategically selected my my patterns and I did not pay attention to that when I cut all the paper for the video and when I was doing it I knew I was doing that <laughs> and I thought it'll be okay it'll just be random so I hope you guys like it if you have not already I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel if you're one of my regular viewers welcome back glad you're here. Everybody take just a second. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Leave me a comment. Let me know how you're doing. All of those um, really help my channel and I appreciate it. My channel, um, you know, having my channel grow is fun and exciting and I'm so happy you guys are along for the ride with me. Okay, this could be the back of our journal or put it here we'll just we'll let that piece be the back piece okay we're almost done laying all of these down and like I said you, there's six panels that need the piece of paper this size okay now again I'm having to just really help work it work it in there okay and now this piece will fit right there. Isn't it pretty? This is one where I used the tiles and um, put the pattern together just a little differently. And again, you don't ever have to do that. If you want to though, or if you wanna make the, like some of the birds larger or some of the flowers larger to use for a project that prints out again then on your eight and a half by 11 paper, that's really, I think, I mean, that's when I do it is when I just wanna see the pattern in a different configuration and size. That printed really pretty, didn't it? Okay, now the front. And the front, same five and seven eighths, and then this piece is two and three eighths inches, and this piece is one and three eighths, and they're going to layer together just like that. So we're gonna lay them down. Now again, if you chose to round your corners, you're you're gonna be rounding your layering papers too. Just, I think you guys know that, but you may wanna do that before you glue it down. <laughs> okay. There we go. So sweet, I love um, birds in my crafting. I think I've shared with you guys, I'm a little afraid of birds in a general sense, like when they fly at me or go towards my head. But I like looking at birds. I think they're beautiful. I like um, artwork that features birds. So there you go. All right. It's so easy. And now I just get to add the rest of the pockets and decorate.
I'm really happy with it. Okay, so again, we'll do it the same way we did the other one. The other one I decorated with a cluster there, but let's let's install the pockets. So this one I just, on the prototype, I just did a little kind of mini collage. Here we're gonna have a belly band, and I have already cut our pockets and belly bands too, so. Oh, that'll be fun. That's a nice contrast, even though I didn't plan it out. You guys notice too, which is different for me, is I'm not inking. Now, on this one, I didn't ink the folio. I did ink some of the ephemera in pieces. So, uh, you ink if you want to ink. If you want to distress ink around the edges, you go ahead and do that. I decided not to for some reason on this one. I didn't on the prototype either. All right, so now we have a nice belly band. I'm gonna let that hold, and then we're gonna open it up. And the belly band measured, again, five and seven eighths by one and three quarter inches. All right, this pocket is gonna be three and seven eighths by two inches. Let's see what paper I picked for that. Okay, that's good. Okay, again, it's worked out that it was the paper on that pocket. Yeah, so I just have to decide which way I want it to lay. And if you want to do a notch here, you can. I'm not going to, but you could. And then glue just on the three sides. I'm holding it by the opening. And I'm going to lay it down. And again, it's the same width as the layering paper, the three and seven eighths, and then two inches. Now, these pockets, let me get to this page for you, I don't know how much of this you can see. I cut a rectangle the same size. So, three and seven eighths by five and seven eighths, and then I cut it on the diagonal and then it should fit in like this. Now, obviously these papers, you know, have a direction to them with the birds. If they didn't, um, I guess you could decide to do this, right? If you wanted this pattern over here and this one down here, but then my birds would be upside down. If you want to and if you wanted to do this, like if you wanted to just have them both top load, not one that's a tuck up this way, you will need to cut another square or another rectangle and then cut the the, the um, angled pocket because like we, even if the bird wasn't upside down, if you turn it this way, because I've only printed on one side, you got a very different, a very different shape pocket or size pocket and it doesn't quite fit. Okay, I hope that didn't confuse you. I like this where we've got a top and then um, a, a top load and then a tuck up spot. All right, these are just triangle pockets, corner pockets. I'm gonna hold it on the diagonal edge and add glue to these two sides and stick it down. These particular birds, I think, I don't know, um, but remind me of like the partridge, the partridge in the pear tree, and there's the pear too, but um, that specific kind of looking bird at Christmas. All right, same thing, glue. If you want different types of pockets or configurations in your little mini album, again, go for it. You can do more side load pockets. You can do more of these top load pockets. You could do some little tiny staggered pockets, whatever you want. And I like all the crazy patterns. If you, if that's a little too busy for you, again, pick different um, papers or use more solids, those types of things. Look at how beautiful. Now, I'm gonna do just a touch of um, decorating, like maybe the front, and I'm going to, so what, how I made some of the larger pieces of ephemera, again, 
I took the tiles that came with the kit so that I could print these birds um, so they are larger than the, the pattern paper that came with the kit. And I did this, this is the partridge paper, and you can see how the bird is larger. So I uh, I encourage you, like I said, if you, you can get the free version of Canva and play with that if that's something that interests you. And this kit also comes with a bunch of the clip art pieces that you can make different things with too, or just use the postage stamps as they are. All right, and I have a bunch of papers that are kind of just the leftover pieces from all the pages that I've cut out. There is, this is one of the ones that has that larger print. So is this one with that bird. So I was gonna make something maybe to go in this pocket and decorate the front just a little bit. So how about we make, the, I don't, yeah, I put this bird inside on this one. Let's make this bird for this pocket right here. And I'm just gonna use my ruler. If I can put my hand on my ruler and use my grid and just tear where the where I get most of the bird. And it'll probably have to go in the pocket sideways like this so we'll see and again just to make sure it's somewhat straight I'm gonna lay it down I don't know if you guys noticed but I did flip my pad over so I have a much cleaner surface right now <laughs> look that's yay uh, a much cleaner surface to work on um, some of the edges. I had, I had used this side before, but it was still in better shape than the other side. So I also, I had mentioned the grid paper that you can get and then, you know, use and throw away in between, you know, after it gets dirty and after a project to protect your work surface. I ordered myself a pad of that. So when those come in, we may try that. Have a different background from the crafting. Now, I can layer this on other cardstock. You guys know the drill. We can do all kinds of things when we make ephemera. I'm going to look at some of these sweet, sweet little postage tags. And maybe I used one to actually make a tab on one of them. But I think I'm just going to put this there on the corner here and maybe put put a bow with it yeah I'm gonna leave it hanging off just a little and I might I don't know I could like I said back this on another piece of cardstock and I might later but for now I'm just gonna do this because this is the supplies that I have out. I think that printed so pretty. I love these birds. And how about a little piece of our gold twine that I love. I had lost this when I was crafting a while back. I don't even remember then where I found it, but it had gotten buried, I think, in my Christmas ribbons. But this is something, especially during the holidays, I just go back to time and time again. A lot of times with my regular kind of junk journal crafting and ephemera making. And I use this at Christmas too, but I love this one. And you see they're almost like the same, same thickness. Scissors, there we go. Little bow. I'll put it right here, kind of. I don't know, just right there. All right, I'm just gonna do a dot of glue like this. Stick this uh, bow on there. Give it just a second to kind of grab hold. And then we're gonna set it aside and let it dry. And it will hold this really skinny thin ribbon on there um, nicely. Let's just set that aside for a minute. Now I'm thinking, I love seeing the white, the contrast there. So I'm trying to decide if I even want to make a cluster. That's what I did here is I just made a little cluster with some of the torn pieces of the 
paper and one of those stamps. And I think it looks really cute, but I needed to, this, this pattern, you know, didn't have like a bird feature or something on it. So I definitely think it needed it. I'm kind of liking this the way it is. I'm wondering though, if a piece of ribbon, I don't really want the same bow here. Let me think, let me think for a minute. The bell is cute, isn't it? Hmm. Maybe I do want to put the bell on. <laughs> the bell, the bell. And it kind of brings the blue from this bird over to this panel. And I do like that. All right, I'm just going to stick it on and maybe with a little piece of ribbon. I have been doing a lot of Christmas crafting. So in my here my scrap bag I have Christmas ribbons not just my regular ribbons so that's kind of fun that's a good one too let's see or do I want some of the red this has the silver and I think I can mix silver and gold when it's Christmas time. I said I was gonna set this aside and I keep pulling it back out so I can have a sense of what that looks like. <laughs> and I don't wanna mess it up. Okay, we're gonna try just a piece of this to have that nice bright red with it. Yeah, maybe just like that, just to make it look fun and festive and still not cover up my white berries that I wanted to save. All right, I could use adhesive, but I am going to staple my little ribbon and then glue it down. Lots of different ways you can attach, you know, your little ribbons and bows if you don't want the staple, which I totally understand if you don't want a staple. Again, uh, some two-sided tape. Uh, what's another good option? Another good option would be your Fabrifix glue, like a fabric glue, to glue that ribbon. Okay, just to remind us what it's gonna look like. Yeah, super cute, right? All right, now well, we need things to go in all the pockets. Let's make one more piece of ephemera uh, out of some of the papers and then I may, I may just ink a few of these little bird tags. And these are the ones, like I said, that have the two from, if you wanna print those out and make yourself some easy, easy peasy gift tags. So a bunch of those would stack in there or a larger piece. Let's make the piece that's gonna go in that top load pocket. So with that one, for the original one, I took a piece like this and I just folded like here and here and glued it together and made sort of like a bookmark shape. But I have a lot of these off cuts and from where I cut the five and seven eighths, ooh, this would be a pretty bookmark too, that one. What I was thinking is even though they're more of this horizontal orientation, I could still just like glue two pieces together and make a tag. But now that I'm looking at these partridge in a pear tree pieces, I think I wanna make one with this. So I still don't want him to be too, too wide. Let's make sure it's gonna fit in here the way I want it to. And it does. And I don't need, I don't need to uh, bring, bring it all the way over. You know what might look fun? It's just a, a little torn edge. And then I'll have this piece, if I wanna use it for something, to decorate another piece later. Now, if we don't want the torn edge, we could go that, but then I think those birds look weird. So let me just get a little bit of the white off a of year because of how I chose to tear it. Hopefully I did not just go too narrow. Okay, 
there we go. We're going to have the, it just looks like his friend is nestled there with him. All right, this is where I am going to use some of the ink. And I'm just using my Walnut Distress Ink. And ta-da! And on the front, we can decorate maybe with one of these stamps that I have cut out. And we can add a ribbon. Some words I, I didn't print me out or get me ready. We could also just write some ourselves, but like some Christmas words, joy to the world. Uh, we could do Noel, we could do Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, all of those lovely things we could do to just add some extra sentiment. I think a stamp or something will be very cute. We could also add a bird. These ornaments were calling out to me. Yeah, and that brings a little bit of red into our yellow and green with the pears. So maybe we'll just do one of these here. And again, we could, we could do more collaging if we want to, but I'm just gonna stick that on. So I think it looks nice. And let me see, when I was throwing my ribbons around a minute ago, there was that piece that had a little bit of neutral and gold in it. And I think that would be pretty if I can, if I can in my messy desk, find it. There we go. This was the end of the, end of the spool. Cut a small piece. And again, I'm just gonna staple it on, just like that. Very easy, easy peasy. The other thing I can do is take some coffee dyed paper and layer the back. So then it's a journaling spot, right? That would be a really good idea if we want to have some journaling space. That looks good. So now we've got the ribbons coming out. Yeah, that's dry enough. Let me open it up. So again, I just have to go through, make some more ephemera, decorate the pockets a little bit, and this one's gonna be done too, and I'll have it ready for my crop bear. So that's what I made today. So now see the difference? You can sort of see if you take the time to round those corners. They're, they have a little different appearance, right? But I like them both. I don't know which one I like better. I like them both for different reasons. Very pretty. I love the papers. Guys, um, go check out her Etsy shop, Cherith Arts. Use the coupon code and um, let me know what you think. I appreciate you watching. Have a great one until next time.